Thanks for checking out this unboxing video. So this is the Snacku regular box, not the tasting box, uh, for December. They made sure that they got it sent out kind of early so that people could have it before the holidays. So um, that was cool on their part. Uh, once again, this one's actually coming from Japan. The, the tasting box, which is much smaller and has a lot less in it, but is pretty cool and is much cheaper, uh, comes from New York. So shipping usually takes a lot longer for the one coming from Japan, obviously. It's got to go through customs, all that jazz. So it's a typical outside look for this one. Um, the theme is... I don't really think it's just, I don't really think it's a theme. I think it's just kind of like a wintry type deal. These things always are very well designed. They look very nice. So I took, you guys, I'm going to tell you, I took a look through this real quick. And um, it looks like this could be, could be the best snacku yet for me. I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying, based off the quick little look I had, could be. So uh, let me read this. Oh, let me show you what's in here first, how it looks in the box. What's in the box? There you go. I'm sorry, there's a bunch of... Some really interesting looking stuff in there, I'd say. Alright, so here we go. I'm going to read the thing here. Winter is one of the best times to visit Japan, a land of constant change and ever-changing seasons. It can be a bit chilly, but it's also one of the most beautiful and exciting times to experience Japanese culture. Beautiful holiday decorations of the big cities, the snow-capped mountains of the rural landscape, the steaming traditional onsen, hot, which are hot springs, and some of the most delicious seasonal delicacies. What's not to like about winter in Japan? It's like a theme, winter in Japan. Did you know that Japan gets some of the heaviest snowfalls in the entire world? I actually did not. Many areas of Japan regularly get over 300 inches of snowfall a year. That's more than double some of the snowiest areas in the U.S. This month's Snacku Box theme is winter in Japan. I don't think they didn't pack up any snow, so anyway. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just show you this real quick in case you want to freeze on that and read those, or I'll just kind of do it like, there you go. Anyway, um, uh, one thing I'm going to tell you, I will read the descriptions on each of these items as I go through them. So I looked ahead. Some of them don't actually tell you what the items are. They just kind of talk, talk about like the region and like the tradition of it. So just know that up front. Have my water over there. I'm going to have to take sips in between. Hopefully I don't forget any of that stuff. All right. So let's go with the first thing. I like to move the extras to the side. Uh, this is Kanazawa Gold Mochi. Now I'm going to tell people right now. I think there's like two mochi things in here. I've actually never had mochi. I'm sorry. I know people watching this who are like big into Japan and Japanese snacks are probably like, what, you've never actually had mochi? No, I've just never had the opportunity to like legit have mochi. Uh, I know there's like a mochi in the United States that's like ice cream related. That's not like the traditional mochi. This is. So let me read about this one. Kanazawa is beautiful. is beautiful historic city located in the snowy northern central part of Japan. During the Edo period, Kanazawa served as the seat of the Meida clan, the second most powerful feudal clan. Kanazawa is famous for being the home of the most beautiful garden in Japan, oh, Ken, Kenrokuen, and is where all the gold leaves found in this snack and covering the famous golden temple in Kyoto in Japan are made. So there's, okay, there's actually gold leaf in it. So it's uh, sugar, mochi powder, gold leaf, and milk. I was literally just saying the other day that, like, I don't like when people use gold in, in things. It just, it seems weird to me. It seems like we shouldn't be doing that. I don't know. Anyway, here is, oh my god. This is, it's like, look, I'm not, like, it's just, like, so, so like soft it's like a silicon implant is what it tastes like or tastes like i don't know what that tastes like uh it's like a silicon implant is what it feels like it's really weird can't really smell anything with this i don't see gold leaf in it oh uh, i guess you can see kind of see yeah you can see some little flecks in there see that it's a little bit of gold Um, it kind of just tastes like a, 
really chewy marshmallow. Like, you know marshmallow peeps? It tastes like a marshmallow peep that just isn't covered with a bunch of granulated sugar on the outside and is a lot, like, chewier. I like it. I mean, who's not going to like something that tastes like marshmallow? That's good. It's kind of like, like starchy tasting as well. I like that. That's pretty good. Good start. I might, that was my first mochi too. So thank you, Snacku, for my first mochi. And there's another mochi, which we'll get to eventually here. I'm just kind of like randomly grabbing things out. So that's the order I'm going in. I'm not going in any like preset order or like tasting order or anything. So I got the water to help. Okay, so here we have Yuki no Yado. Show you a picture of it. Cute little thing on there. There you go. So people say, oh, that looks like a senbai. Uh, Hokkaido sugar cream glazed crispy senbai, which looks like a layer of snow fell on the top of the rice cracker. It's one of our favorites here at Snacku. It says there's sugar, vegetable oil, salt, skim, milk powder, gelatin, soybeans, fresh cream, powdered soy sauce, and wheat. Powdered soy? I didn't know there was a thing, such a thing as powdered soy sauce, but it's a thing, people. Powdered soy sauce. So this should be like a salty senbai, basically, with like some, some like sugary frosting type flavor, I'm assuming. There you go. I mean, it looks cool. It looks a little artistic. Oh, definitely smells like senbai. It smells salty and um, soy saucy. I don't smell any of sweetness. So that's interesting. Um... It definitely tastes just like a soy saucy, salty senbai. There's a decent amount of saltiness to it, but I like that. It's got really good crunch. And then it's kind of like, if people are familiar, do you remember like shredded wheats, like frosted, frosted mini wheats? That kind of like frosting on top of the frosted mini wheats, that's what that, the white stuff on here tastes like. So it's like a salty soy saucy senbai that you taste up front and then comes in that frosted mini wheat frosting flavor. Um, at first it's a little odd, but it works because like sweet and savory goes together a lot. I like, I quite like that. That's good. Yeah, I like that. That kind of like, um, that coming together of the sweet and savory and that's really nice. And I've said it on these unboxings before. I really like like a nice crunchy texture. The texture on that's great. You know, typical senbai. Um, all right. So the next thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for these first. Do one of these. These look interesting. Um, these are milk carinto, carinto. Sweet organic milk glazed brown sugar crackers from Hokkaido. Have flour, sugar, vegetable oil, milk, sweetened condensed milk, honey, salt, gelatin, and sesame. The sesame is what I like to hear. I'm a big fan of sesame flavor. In fact, one of the favorite thing one of my favorite things I've gotten out of a snacku to date right now was their like black sesame senbai that they sent the one time. Oh my god, it's so good. So I'm find the best way to open this. There we go. Okay. Oh, it smells like a... kind of smells like a donut, to be honest. It smells like a donut, people. Like, it smells fried, but, like, sweet and sugary. That legit smells like a donut. What is this again? It's just... It's a cracker. It's a milk-glazed brown sugar cracker. It smells like a friggin' fresh donut. Dude, it tastes like a donut. That tastes like a donut. You can see like the fry portion of it. These are like mini donuts, man. That's delicious. Wow. I didn't even know anything like that existed. Yeah, there's like a good vanilla to it it definitely has that kind of like milky flavor and consistency there's a significant fried note 
on there. It kind of like lingers, it makes it a little bit fatty in your mouth. And it's like a nice amount of sugar, but it's not like crazy sugary. And it comes off a little cinnamony as well. The brown sugar is actually playing a little cinnamon uh, in there. That's delicious. That's very delicious. Uh, yeah, it's my favorite thing thus far. I mean, I know it's only three things, but you know, that's my favorite. That's awesome. My wife, Rebecca, she's going to dig that. She's really going to dig that. Definitely need a drink of water after that. Mm. By the way, I know there aren't a ton of people who watch these videos, but I have a lot of fun putting them out. So for anyone who actually does watch them, thank you very much for watching. I will continue to do them for you. And then tell some friends if you have interest. Okay, next. I don't know what this is. This is one where there's just like one big thing of it. Um, salted lemon okaki. Uh, Bite-sized rice crackers sprinkled with lemon salt. Hmm. Uh, you won't be able to stop eating these. I hope so. Uh, rice, vegetable oil, salt, sugar, lemon powder, yeast extract powder, black pepper, and milk powder. There's a lot of like milk stuff. I guess that's where they're saying like, oh, it's like the snow, white, you know, that correlation. That's fine. Oh, I tore this off and I didn't like show you the packaging. Sorry. There you go. Sorry, it's not complete. My bad. Okay, so. I mean, they look kind of like, like little pieces of, of like torn bread that were then like fried or something. That's what they look like. They smell a little salty, a little sweet. Hmm. Um, significantly crunchy. They are kind of like bread, kind of bready. They're almost like garlic bread croutons, how they taste. I'm like that like really light crunchiness, because they're not dense. They're like really light. Yeah. You know, I am getting that lemon powder, but it's very, very faint. And it does add to the flavor. It's like this nice little bit of citrus uh, amongst a bunch of saltiness. That is good. And as you keep eating, you start to get more and more and more of that lemon flavor. Those are nice. This is like this nice little bite-sized snack. I could see like watching a movie and just eating these like popcorn. Those are really good. Those are really good. And they're interesting because that lemon note, you wouldn't, I mean, that's not something you would think of and be like, oh, these things go together, or see that on a shelf and be like, oh, that sounds like something that would be great. That's one of the things I love about boxes like this is you get to try things you would normally just be like, I'm going to pass on that. It sounds a little weird. And then you find out, pretty awesome. All right, that's good. Not a bad item yet. This is a strong box. Like, performance-wise, performance -wise, very strong box. Okay, I'm going to go with this thing that's, like, loosely wrapped. Um, it's going to be hard to, uh, is this the chestnut puff? I'll show you it first and then I'm going to have to figure out. It's like a, it's, it's like a mini burger that's wrapped. That's kind of what that looks like. I'm going to open this up. Uh, I think this is the Ch Nagano chestnut puff. Yeah, yeah. This is a chestnut puff. Yeah, it looks like a burger. It's like a little, like, burger. It's like a burger bun that isn't cut. That's what it looks like. So, Nagano Chestnut Puff. Nagano evolved as a temple town around Zenkoji, one of Japan's most popular temples. In 1998, the city hosted the Winter Olympic Games. In the snowy forested mountains northwest of the city center lies the Tokagushi area, which was the legendary home of the Togakure Ninja School. Cool. Uh, contains wheat, sugar, chestnut, red bean paste, salt, and eggs. Well, I heard the magic word, red bean paste. So people were familiar with this. With When I do these, you know, I'm a fan of the red bean paste. It smells, it actually smells a little chemical-y. I smell the chestnut. I smell the red bean. 
really fluffy. So, because of the consistency of the chestnut and the red bean and how that mixes, it's like potato-y, but it's sweet from the red bean paste, which is kind of like a sugary, almost like date or fig type flavor. But the pastry around it, the breading around it, is like a, like a cream puff. Like the same type of thing. But it's just filled with chestnut and red bean. It's sugary, but it's not crazy sugary. This is probably my least favorite item at the moment, but it's good. I enjoy that. It's very different. I don't know. I just don't know how I feel about chestnut in things. I'm not, I don't know. I'm just not big on chestnut, but the red bean in that I like. So when you put those two things together, it's like, I kind of like half like it. I kind of half don't really like it. I don't know, but it's good. Good enough, you know? Water. Alright. That was, like, relatively sweet. So, hopefully the next thing is not. Uh, this looks like the Hanamiyuki, which I think is just, like, an assortment of, of like, little senbai. There you go. It's pretty. Looks nice. Yeah, so this is a little tricky to open these sometimes. Because they're in like a little tray. I'm gonna open it over the plate that I have over here, guys. Sorry. Alright, so. Yeah, they do it in like these little trays. It's hard to get them out of here. Yeah, I'm familiar. We, we've gotten something very similar to this before. And it looks like it's like the same um, assortment. I can't really show you too well. There you go. You can get a pretty decent look at them. I'm gonna go through and. Yeah, it's just like a sorted senbai. Um, like this one looks like a shrimp. It smells fishy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although, I get a little bit of shrimp. It's salty. But it's kind of coming off like a nice potato chip. Which is like a little bit of seafood to it. That one's good. I like that. This one looks like it's like black sesame. Which, I just talked about Black Sesame. I'm a fan. Mmm. Yeah. Definitely taste the sesame. Get a lot of soy to that. It's not very salty. But it's just like soy and sesame. That's good. I'm just leaving half of all those. So, Rebecca can then try them. So, then there's this one. Which kind of looks like it has that milk powder on it. It might be hard to see because it's like white on white. You see? Like you can see the texture. There you go. You can kind of like see it. So it looks like it's very similar to that like white um, milk powder, like frosted uh, senbai we just had. Yeah, that's what it is. It's just like a, although it's not as salty as the other one. It's like low saltiness, a lot of uh, nice sweetness from that milk stuff on the top. This one's pretty typical, you know, it's just some nori seaweed on top of a senbai. Very typical. Yeah. Normal. It's fine. It's got that oceanic fishy note to it. I expected that one. This one looks like it has like little pieces of seaweed. Real crunchy. Good amount of sweetness to it. A little bit of um, fishiness. Not nearly as much as the other one. It's good. Then we have this one. It's like sugar. It's kind of like sugar. Yeah, it's got like some sugar on it. It's like orange. Yeah, totally. It's like a salty senbai with orange. That's good. I like that. I was not prepared for that, as you could tell by my reaction. This one, I don't know. It just looks kind of... What is that in there? I don't even know. I just taste like a straight senbai. Just like slightly salty and a good amount of soy sauce. It's good. And then this one 
Looks like it has a like a coffee bean in it or something. It tastes like a roasted pea. Is basically what that is. Yeah, it's like a nice little send by with like a roasted pea. I'm putting them all back in the little tray so I can conserve space. Nope, some stuff falling there. All right, I don't think I read what that one. Uh, yeah, Hanamiyuki. The eight types of seasonal senbai rice crackers here represent winter in Japan and the snow delicately falling on flowers. The flavors include winter yuzu. That's where that orange was that I was getting. Uh, winter yuzu citrus, roasted sesame, white sugar glaze, baked seaweed, soy glaze, black soybean, shredded soy seaweed, and winter sweet shrimp. Contains rice, salt, yuzu powder, sesame oil, sesame, sugar, milk, seaweed, soybean, shrimp, sesame seeds. Good though. Good. I, people, you know I like me some good senbai. Ooh, okay. So let's move on here. I think I'm ready for the next mochi, the other mochi, I should say. Okay, so this is Iwate Plum Mochi. I don't think we've had anything plum yet in this. It looks like it has a leaf on it. I think it does. I'm going to read that one. Iwate is a large prefecture on the Pacific coast in the northern Tohoku region and has beautiful scenic coastlines. The area was the former political and cultural center for the Tohoku region. This snack is made by Tamora, a small local shop which has been making authentic snacks since 1903. Nice. You can eat the plum leaves that wrap this snack. Contains rice sugar, plum jelly, salt, plum leaves, and sweet bean paste. Sounds good. Oh man, this it's kind of like... Oh my god, it's like super packaged. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get this. Oh my. I think I have to like... Alright, I'm going in with the teeth, people. I don't recommend this, but... Not working. It's not working. Wait, I have some... This is dumb, but I have something pointy over here. I know you guys come to watch the, uh... Watch the videos for me to struggle with opening these freaking things. Alright. That's better. I got it. I got it, people. Sorry about that. Took a while. As you can see... Actually, I just take it out of there. It's in, like, this little thing. Yeah, and it legit, like, has a leaf around it. It says you can eat the leaf. Maybe I'll take a... Uh, I'll just eat it that way, since that's how it comes. And you can see, you can definitely just see it's like a leaf. And then I'll show you after I bite in. But it just smells like... It smells real vegetal, because of that leaf. But it also smells kind of minty. It smells good. Oh. It's interesting, because there's, like, a snap when you're biting through the leaf. This is weird. So, it tastes kind of flowery. Look at this. It's kind of like oozing out. I definitely taste the bean paste. I'm tasting the plum in there. But it's tasting very floral. It's almost a little bit perfumey. So for me, I really like that. I know a lot of people would probably complain about the consistency of this because it's very, very jelly-like and a lot of people just don't like that type of stuff, but I'm glad to have tried this. It is interesting. Not my thing, though. It's got a decent sweetness to it. I think that kind of like floral note is really outplaying the plum. The plum notes are very low. I'd like a lot more plum to it and a lot less floral. So, I'm going to put that aside. Hopefully, Rebecca likes that one. If not, so that's the big loser. Ooh, okay, definitely got to cleanse that palate after that one. All right, so next, this is white chocolate langue de chat. 
uh, mini delicate butter cookies filled with mild white chocolate. Can't really go wrong. Uh, contains wheat, flour, sugar, margarine, eggs, butter, whey, milk, salt, soybeans. Do, 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 do. Yep. That's a thing. It's just like a sleeve of these mini cookies. Who isn't going to be interested in some mini cookies? Wait. Oh, it's got like its own little. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, this is like a little baby cookie. <laughs> Look at how small that is. It kind of reminds me of um, Ritz Bits cracker sandwiches, except they're cookies. Yeah. Oh, it smells really sweet. It smells nice. White chocolatey. I mean, sugary, vanilla y, white chocolatey. Really buttery. Actually, those, the cookie portions on the outside are really buttery. That's the best part of this. That butteriness is pretty outstanding, actually. You're just. Your teeth just like cut through it. It's really tasty. It's really tasty. You can tell that's awful for you, but it tastes really good. Wow. Yeah, that's nice. Mmm. That's good. I think I have like two more things. Okay. I'm gonna. Mm, I have to end on that one. Okay. So this one is the one that looked the most interesting to me. I was very perplexed when I saw it in here. So this is called. Hokkaido baked potato. You see this? Look at this. It looks like a mini eclair without chocolate on it. This is basically what it looks like. Hokkaido is the second largest, northernmost, and least developed of Japan's four main islands. It experiences harsh winters with lots of snowfall, below zero temperatures, and frozen seas. With its unspoiled nature, Hokkaido attracts many outdoor lovers, including skiers and snowboarders in the colder seasons, and hikers, cyclists, and campers during the mild summer months. So this contains Hokkaido potato, wheat, sugar, and egg. It's very simple. Potato. So I wonder, I wonder if you're going to get a lot of the potato consistency, because that kind of like, that's something I don't so much like in these. It looks kind of like burnt on the outsides. A little bit like a pig in a blanket. What is it? It smells interesting. Mmm. Yeah. Potato. It legit tastes like a baked potato. But but it has like sweetness to it though. See that? So the inside is just like this cream colored ball that's packed that's a little um grainy with the outside and the way that's done it legitimately tastes like the skin like the the kind of like fire grilled or like um like partially burnt baked potato skin i mean legitimately it tastes like a baked potato with the skin with like sugar added to it like a sugar cream. It's weird for that, for that reason, but it's interesting, so I'm glad I had it. I wouldn't say I would want necessarily more of this, but I'm glad I had it because it's very it's very interesting. Very interesting. I have two of those. So, all right. And then the last thing we're getting to. I always save the hard candies for last. Because then I can just keep, you know, keep them in my mouth. So this is a blueberry candy. Let me show you right here. It literally says blueberry candy on it. There you go. Uh, Freeze-dried blueberry puree turned into a delicious hard candy. Sounds like if you like blueberry, all good. Contains soy sugar, blueberry extract, blueberry juice, and salt. I'm ready for this. I like a nice hard candy. From time to time, not not a lot. Okay, I mean, looks like it would be blue. I think. Can you see like it looks like it's like seeds in there? Yeah, maybe it's just like little air bubbles. Just smells like sugar. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yeah. 
you like blueberries, man, it's like blueberry explosion. And because they use, like, actual blueberry in it, not just, like, blueberry flavor, it tastes very nice, like, authentic blueberry flavor. I'm going to keep sucking on this. That's really good. I like that quite a bit. Okay, so let's recap. Overall, yeah, this is a really good snack group. There are only a few things I didn't really like. What did I not really like? Um, I liked everything on the side here. All that was really good. And then of the main things, the only things I didn't really care for, that plum mochi, wasn't a big fan of that one. The chestnut puff, mm, wasn't a big fan of that. And the ba baked potato was at least interesting, so that was fine. But my favorite things... Mm, favorite things that those little these things these little things that were like the donuts those things are amazing like a uh, uh, freaking amazing and the lemon akaki things these things are really cool so oh and then the I mean these are really awesome too though those are my three favorite things it was really nice though Blurry candy. Okay, awesome. Snacku. Good, good, good job. Uh, I look forward to more snackus like this. This is the best snacku I've had thus far. And uh, yeah, very, very happy with that. I'm going to shut this down right now. I'm going to go share the other halves with Rebecca upstairs, see what she thinks. And then um, we'll be back for another video. Uh, people, feel free, leave some comments down there. Tell me what was interesting to you, what wasn't interesting, what you like talk about Japan, whatever, you know, whatever you want to. And if you could just hit a, the subscribe for me, it literally takes you like a second and it can mean a lot for me in the long run. So I would appreciate that. You can do thumbs up if you want all that stuff. But anyway, thank you for watching this regardless. And until next time, keep it brutal.